Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, nice to see so many people here. Like uh, Chris said, uh, we are about 50% uh, over uh, last year. Uh, got me thinking that maybe we need uh, Moore's Law for KVM forums to predict the growth. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, we've been quite, uh, quite some way from the first KVM forum in 2007. Just uh, 50 people in some uh, five-star uh, resort hotel. <laughs> So we made some progress since then. Okay, um, so let's look at the uh, recent uh, work. This is just in the kernel, not, uh, not in the user space, in the QML. Uh, so there's been uh, a lot of work on uh, nested virtualization, uh, completing the uh, AMD implementation and uh, bringing up the uh, Intel implementation. There is work on uh, asynchronous page faults. Uh, which improve the uh, uh, memory use on, uh, on uh, overcommitted uh, situations. Uh, and there have been the shadow MMU performance improvements um, that are present in almost every release. This, this work never ends. Um, uh, moving away from uh, the x86 stuff, there's the hypervisor mode power PC uh, port. Um, uh, which will have the uh, very first talk right after this uh, keynote. Uh, there's been a transparent huge pages merged after a, a huge amount of work, which gives a very nice uh, uh, boost to KVM. And uh, vhostnet uh, zero copy, which uh, improves networking performance. Uh, and what we can see from, from this list is that the x86 port is more or less complete. So there's still some work uh, going on, but uh, it's not the, the work that we had initially to get things working and getting reliable and support more and more guests. Uh, instead, it's uh, rounding up the feature list and uh, exploring some, uh, some new uh, interesting features, but not something basic. On the other hand, most of the work is outside on uh, new ports, on non x86 ports, and on uh, general kernel uh, improvements that are also important uh, for KVM. And I expect to see more of that uh, over time. Uh, so let's look at some of the work in pro progress. Uh, again, just at the kernel level, not uh, in user space. And these are two features which are interesting uh, to me personally. One is the VFIO, uh, which uh, improves device assignment. And we'll have a talk on that as well. And uh, the other is uh, dynamic NUMA, which uh, improves performance on a, a very large uh, memory system or, or large CPU systems. Uh, and one of the reasons they're interesting to me is because they continue the trend uh, of KVM-driven innovation uh, that's used to improve not only KVM itself, but the rest of the kernel. Uh, both of these are uh, uh, applicable not just inside KVM, but also for uh, regular kernel workloads, uh, which is uh, important to me because We've benefited so much from the general kernel, it's good to be contributing back. <coughs> so uh, the new ports, uh, historically, uh, non-x86 ports, non ports have not been uh, very successful. Uh, there's this uh, cycle where the new port is contributed, and it works, and there's some excitement. But then we don't hit, uh, hear a lot more about it. Um, I think this time those two ports are uh, different. Um, I've been talking about ARM probably every KVM forum, saying how I expect it, but this time it's actually happening and, and it's different. The two reasons are, uh, well, first we have actual patches that actually run on the simulator, uh, so it's a lot easier to guess that they'll be there uh, very soon. And the second is that it's no longer oriented at um, uh, the mobile space uh, or the embedded space. Uh, instead, it's uh, uh, targeted at the server space, uh, which is uh, where the case for virtualization is a lot stronger. It's been proven again and again on the mainframe on x86. Uh, so there's every reason to expect that it will be very successful. And um, the second new port, which has already been merged, is the hypervisor mode power port. Now there have been uh, maybe three or four, I lost count of the number of PowerPC ports we have. Uh, but again, this one is different because it's the first port that uh, can completely exploit the uh, hardware capabilities uh, and uh, therefore it can compete with the uh, closed source offerings that, uh, on that hardware. 
So uh, this one also has a chance to uh, make its mark uh, and be as successful as KVM is in an uh, x86 space. Another theme that uh, we will see in this forum is that we continue climbing up the stack. Uh, like I mentioned, the uh, kernel work in KVM itself is mostly uh, rounding up the feature list and uh, cleaning things up. It's not uh, the huge changes that we had before. Uh, and we will see more focus. We had it already last year, but even more this year on QML. And up the stack, we will see uh, libvirt, uh, VDSM, and a presentation about uh, RevM. Uh, and this will be, uh, uh, we'll see more and more of that as the actual caving work is uh, more and more uh, mature and complete. And we need a complete stack uh, for actual customers. Open Virtualization Alliance. Uh, traditionally, it's been uh, a neglected area in KVM. We didn't, uh, weren't focused very much on the marketing, more on the code itself. And uh, that's been a pretty big gap. And the Open Virtualization Alliance is now uh, filling it. So we have about 100 members and counting. Uh, and uh, I expect uh, great deeds from them to push KVM where it hasn't gone before. And last, uh, we have the, I think the biggest challenge here is uh, probably pretty standard in um, mature software. Uh, we have to balance between agility and stability. Uh, because it's um, mature and in production, uh, people expect that it will work every time, it will be stable, it will be fast, um, uh, it will preserve their data. But also we need to uh, retain agility so that uh, we, we can uh, uh, continue to move ahead and we don't get uh, developers frustrated with uh, uh, slow progress and uh, get the fragmentation. Um, so we will need to balance uh, those two needs in some way. Well, that's it. So uh, enjoy KVM Forum 2011. Thank you.